Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Health or High Water Podcast. I am Brett Hutari from Ascent Performance Training, also with my co-host, Mr. Trip Parks. What's happening, my good friend? How are you doing today? What's up? Thank you so much for joining us on this snowy, snowy, snowy day. Um, the Health or High Water Podcast is run by us, two personal trainers. Um, Trip is a DNA certified genetic-based program designer. Um, and I am a certified personal trainer. We both have uh, fifteen over fifteen years experience, more, probably more than that. <laughs> I don't it's know. Like Twenty five. <laughs> I was going to say probably over twenty years experience in that personal training industry, um, training everybody from um, you know kids uh, as young as four right now. I think my youngest is four years old uh, for baseball. I'm also a private baseball instructor, and uh, our oldest, you know, all the way up to eighty. Um, so running the gamut. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. We wanted to do today's episode. Uh, Trip, why don't you jump in there? What are we talking about today? Well, one of the uh, one of the big things that is dear to Brett and I's heart is working with senior citizens. Um, you know, first and foremost, it's they are the most under. Uh, I don't think value is the right word, but under. Uh, yeah. Well, undervalued, yeah, 100% sure. undervalued, sure. as well as uh, <clears throat> mistreated might not be the right word, but I think they're. They're overlooked quite I think a bit. Resources have been uh, are never allocated towards towards you know that, and it's it's a concern too as people get older. Some people who have saved money and have access to some of the best care get a lot, and some people don't. Well, one hundred percent. And for those of you guys who don't know, um, you know, Brett and I've had our issues with our family health and gone up and down. And with you speak with my mom, you know, her stroke that turned dementia is completely avoidable. I uh, spent half of a whole year just trying to rehabilitate her. So um, this podcast is going to be about how you guys can keep yourselves um, feeling good for into into older age as we age longer and, and, and more than we ever have in human mm-hmm. society, as well as making sure that we feel good throughout, uh, throughout our life. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about our experience working with senior citizens in a class type one-on-one, what we do to help program. Uh, we're going to go into a deep dive about making sure that we are we're staying longevity based. Yeah, that and you know the the quick story too is is you know I didn't know personal training. I didn't know that this was going to be such a big passion of mine and and yours too. I know it's the same with you. But as we started, you know, ascend performance, and we started working with a lot of different clients, we saw the opportunity. We saw the opportunity that we had to make an impact. Um, and once we got in and we started teaching classes, we realized how much they appreciated it, how much they loved it. And, and thinking about our parents and as our parents get older, you know, my number one thing personally is going to be taking care of my parents. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I'm the youngest and, uh, you know, I don't know if that has any effect on it, but, uh, it's my, it's my responsibility. So I would want somebody to take care of my parents Um, the same way. So that's kind of what this episode is about. We're going to get into um, some things that that are going on in the industry because we're in it and we teach classes weekly at some of the assisted living centers in town, some of the memory care units, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, you name it. Um, So we're going to go over some of the stuff um, and just have a discussion on it. Let's let's dive into the uh, the, the the problem that senior sure. citizens are. Let's let's let, let's identify the problems that sure. are going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the big things I'm seeing is, uh, especially when taking care of mom, was the lack of medical care, right? Like the the week she had her stroke, it took six months after that to get a CT scan in her brain, or MRI, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Six months. The damage is already done at that point. Mm-hmm. Right, like, why, why are we going in for a CT scan? Like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. So, I'm sure you've you've seen those kind of things happen too, especially with older clients coming in trying to get health stuff. I mean, like, healthcare mm-hmm. is just not for them when it should be all about them, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of and there's there's and and it's, it's scary sometimes because you feel like you're going into the doctor all the time. You're constantly focused on problems, and yeah. issues. Um, and in our generation now, there's a there's a it, we're more health conscious now. Back at when a lot of these people who are older now, health wasn't really a trend. People weren't thinking about it. So now we have all these this aging population, um, 
who are now health conscious, they know that exercising, stretching, breathing, uh, activities, engaging activities, uh, connection, bonding, music. Uh, hope, music. There's lots of things that are important now that we're starting to see integrated into some of these assisted living centers. But it wasn't always like that. No, and and, and you know, taking that step back too, just to add on what you're saying is, mm-hmm. look, look how you know younger people were dying mm-hmm. back in the day. I mean, what what even like when the '90s, when you and I were growing up, we're looking at six, 64 to 70 was pretty freaking old right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. comparatively speaking it was old like that's you know you're retired at that point you're enjoying life Mm -hmm. anything past that was you know borrowed time but now you're seeing people living into their 80s and 90s and a lot of them still having to work yeah right because they're they they can't afford retirement Mm -hmm. right so you're seeing this aging population of people that are trying to take better care of themselves but don't have the ability to because look they grew up with the food pyramid yeah. And all yeah. these other different things. Like, hey, hey, you take a statin. It's going to make sure that you don't have another heart attack. Oh, what about all the side effects about statins and everything? I mean, mm-hmm. they, they, that generation had their had wool pulled over their, their, their eyes for many, many decades. And, and I feel bad that they're just now kind of like getting into that, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. What are, you, what are some of your thoughts on like as you start to – when you're teaching these classes now, uh, what, what are you focused on? Obviously – you know, fitness, a lot of them are fitness based, but what, what, what are your thoughts? What's your thought process going into it? What is, what's you, how do you, how do you take some of these, uh, assisted living facilities and, and, and make these classes better? How does a life enrichment director structure their schedule? Like what are the answers to some of, some of those questions? First things first, and especially anybody out there that's going through something like this, or maybe does classes themselves is getting to know the people first and foremost. Right, get to know each individual, what they need, what their goals are, uh, and and secondly, when you're focusing on building programs around this, it's about functionality, right? What's actually going to work? Is like, if, am I going to put grandma underneath a three fifteen bench press? Probably not, <laughs> right? Would it be badass? <laughs> yes, it'd be awesome. But things things like you know just uh, doing body squats and shoulder rotations, working the neck like you do for. For classes, those kind of function, uh, those kind of things are functional and actually they work to, mm-hmm. to help. So, it's really about uh, functionality and um, uh, what's the right word? Uh, not expediting, but uh, efficiency. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of these older people, they, you know, they don't have time. They're going from you know some, some these retirement communities are going from class to class and taking naps and got lunch and like their day is already planned out. Yeah, there's hundreds. There is so many assisted living facilities. Some of them. Uh, some you know, and there's a whole spectrum as far as you know cost. Some of them are obviously oh, way more expensive than others, um, but I think there's some important things. I, uh, I I noticed there's a a need for good good quality life enrichment directors. We have a, a amazing friend of ours, uh, Crystal. Shout uh, out shout out to Crystal from Balfour, uh, and shout out to Balfour in general. Um, they're one of the more exp- not expensive, but high class i guess yeah they're, they're, it's a fantastic facility there's lots of them but shout out to her and we're gonna have her on the podcast too shortly and and talking about some of this stuff so i'm sure we'll learn a ton more from her but some of the important things what we're realizing is that there is a need for great uh activities directors and life enrichment directors and I, we got the question from us is like what are some of the things that these people need to be aware of right away when they're starting to figure out how to schedule activities what are the important things? Number one, understanding the residents, right? Yeah, 100%. You can't do anything before you understand. This is the number one thing as an enrichment director is understanding your residents. You got to assess their needs and their preferences. Figure out what do these, these people need. And also number two is what are their preferences? Um, it's the most important thing, right? No, 100%. I mean, because you don't want to offer a boxing class to your people when, you know, Maybe they're more interested in doing uh, yoga or Pilates or whatever have you. And I, I think that's a really good – it doesn't even matter if it's just um, this industry or not. Learn who your clients are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what business it is. Learn who your clients are and what, mm-hmm. what makes them happy and what makes them tick. Because, I mean, you know, this the 80-20 rule still exists. 80% of all your revenue from your business comes from 20% of your hardcore users mm-hmm. every single time. 
Yeah, that's a great point. So I understand your residents interested. And the other, and the third part of that is their abilities, right? Get to know the residents, their hobbies, preferences, and uh, and their cognitive abilities. Some of these people right. are Parkinson's, right. some are dementia, some are fine. And they're just, you know, so that's the number one thing as an, uh, an enrichment director is step one. Uh, number two, promoting physical health. That's the important thing. Uh, safe exercise program with a triple underline under safe, right? You mentioned don't get grandma under <laughs> 315. You just keep on imagining it, though. So number two is, you know, physical health. How can we get these people active? How can we improve their physical well-being? And that's with safe exercise programs uh, that are ta- uh, tailored directly towards them. Stretching, yoga, Pilates, walking, um, all these things. Some of them are free. Some You can have instructors come in that are professional that can help promote this. Um, and then also accessibility with that. And I want to add on to what you're mm-hmm. saying too, is you don't have to be working at a lifestyle enrichment director or even a nurse at one of these locations. Mm-hmm. What you, uh, what you, what, what you, it, it, I'm sorry, someone just walked in, I'm train of thought went out, but you could just be taking care of your parent at home. Yeah. Listening to this a- and, and, and applying this exact 100%. same thing. Mm-hmm. What, what did your mom used to like to do? What did your dad used to like to do back mm-hmm. in the day? Did they like jazz? Like we'll start ha- have like a jazz hour every day, mm-hmm. and especially with these memory care, uh, memory issues, like, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, those things where you're kind of like starting the day over every single time. Mm-hmm that's going to mean the world to them because it's, it's a new experience for them that day. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So everything that we're saying right now, doesn't have to be just applied, uh, in, in like a facility. You could do, be doing this at home too. Like what can I do to make sure that my, my mom, dad, brother, sister, whoever I'm taking care of has mm-hmm. a, has a good quality life. Yeah, exactly. Great point. Uh, number three. So from the physical moving on, uh, supporting mental and emotional well being. So we have the physical, we have the physical part. We know that that's important and we have to get to the mental. We have to get to the emotional well being. Um, we have to have cognitive activities. So as an enrichment director, or like you mentioned, this could just be somebody at home with taking care of their parents. There has to be cognitive activities, incorporate something that's stimulating the mind, uh, whether it's a puzzle, a memory game, uh, a book club, um, some sort of lifelong learning opportunity, even if it's sewing or knitting or something like that. Yeah, I used to give my mom those little coloring books. Mm-hmm. That it's like like color by number. I like it. And it was it was for kids, but you know that's the her that's what her level was at. You know, mm-hmm. so she would get there and she'd sit there and color by numbers, and you know she'd go show me and stuff like that. So I mean, those could be like honestly like as bad as the situation is probably if you're listening to this podcast and you know formulating something, you know, make the best out of a bad situation. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 100%, totally. Um, emotional support, which is what you were just talking about, cognitive activities and then emotional support. Um, what are some ways, give me some ideas, how, how, how we can incorporate into a structured activity for either an enrichment director or somebody helping, how can we provide emotional support? Understanding what the emotion is at the time, number one, is understand. So let's say someone's having um, an episode, like dementia episode, like, you know, my mom always wants to go to court for some reason. I got to go to court. It's the weirdest thing, right? Mm-hmm. Do n- Number one is don't fall into the delusion, right? Don't be like, oh, yeah, no, court got canceled today, whatever. Don't do that. And then on the other end, don't, as, as well, don't, uh, don't negate what she's saying. Right? Like, hey, like, listen, this is not real. Like, you don't need to go to court. The best thing to do is to distract. Right? So, like, they're, they're, all, they're all excited. Well, hey, mom, let's, let's go let's sit down and uh, let's, let's, let's look at this little video I found online real quick. Let's go sit down. Let's go pet the dog. We, oh, we got to take the dogs out real quick before we go do anything. Let's go do that. So, understanding the situation for me is number one. Right? Understand exactly what emotion is going on with the person and what the right, um, right tools and methods are what we can use right Mm -hmm. always think of always be grateful and think about it from a grain of salt too you know like you don't know what they're thinking what's going on in their brain yeah that's a really good point too um just to tag on to that too pet therapy is great all right get animals involved always got to have pet therapy it's it's just that companionship's great Uh, music therapy music is a huge part of of you know developing you know keeping your brain healthy and, 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 uh, part of us in general, you have to have music involved. Uh, and then, you know, think about having group discussions that allow your residents or even your parents or whoever a chance to express themselves and share experiences. I think one of the biggest things personally that you and I have done during our fitness class 
classes is always, and you've done a great job about this, is always uh, letting them share experiences. So at particular classes, we've learned more about the members, about back in where they were 40, 50 years ago, what countries they went to uh, with their husbands or significant others or whatever it is. Those stories that they're telling, you can always see them digging into like past memories and, and thinking fondly of it. Uh, that's such an important you know, part of regular activity. I mean, it can be done during physical education class. It can be done before or after. Um, and then also you're developing that huge community. Um, this brings me into number four for you, uh, fostering social connections. See, that's huge. And you're seeing a huge uh, decline in senior citizen socializing. I mean, right? I mean, we have, we have a few people coming in that's not part of our memory care unit and, and what have you come in that are, you know, 70 plus um and they don't socialize they don't get out like their workout time is like their time that they socialize and talk but it's typically not with people their own age mm -hmm. so going to find like tea times like you know i'm saying like golf i mean you could do golf if you want to but you know go grab a, a cup of tea with some neighbors and you know try to find people in your own age there's tons of resources and um uh and opportunities all around you can search for you know denver.org for senior citizens uh, senior citizen uh activities and groups Facebook has a ton of groups like that too. And if you guys are, aren't uh, technologically proficient, you know, ask your son or your daughter to be a part of this. So you know, they might want to go with you too. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, I want you know, I I love to go hit a golf ball with you down the driving range, or go play some bridge or bingo or what have you. Like, have have something like have events and stuff that socialize that can include the whole family. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that you hit it. Family involvement or organizing events that even if it's a uh, one family member yeah. that you haven't finding ways to encourage that, like you said, are, are huge group activities are also huge. Um, we all have good days. We all have bad days. Even us, even it doesn't matter if you're old or young, whatever. But having that stability of having somebody you can count on where whether it be a resident advisor or a family member or somebody as a foundation is life changing. Those bonds fostering good, strong social connections are so important. Um, we have a few more. How are we doing on time? We're doing pretty we got a little, got a little, got a little bit longer. Time. Um, number five. We have number five coming up, which is per personalization and flexibility. Um, this goes into individual interests while group activities. Number five. Number five um, is going to be personalization and flexibility. Um, so this goes into personal. This and this goes into what we do: personalizing, customizing programs. Yes. But, but. Um, you can have these group activities, but how can we personalize things for people? Some people at assisted living centers need different things than others, right? Number one is listening, right? And I, I mean that in like the most honest, heartfelt thing, listen. And I mean like on different levels, listen to what they're saying, listen to what they want to do. Listen to who they are. Like you're talking about us, us like learning about the, these great adventures they had 50, 60 years ago. Listen to who they are and listen to what they want and listen to their goals. And then the same thing with, the, you know, understanding what the, um, the mountain you have to climb is like, hey, maybe someone's got an issue down the road that their A1C is really, is, is really high. They've got a high propensity to be overweight. It's hard for them to burn fat. Understanding all these things and listening and coming up with a program is, for, for me, the most important. We have to understand the scope of the situation before you can take it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the Japanese culture. Um one of the biggest things I love about it is how how much I don't want to say better. I mean, yeah, I guess how much better they treat their elders. Uh, yeah, like they look at old things as having more value. So broken things have more value because it has wear and tear. It has use, uh, and this goes into developing relationships. I think a lot of times as providers, or even you know, if you're taking care of a parent or something, you look it's easy to fall into the trap of looking at them as they are today, right? Cognitive decline, yes. um, you know, not as cap physically capable. And we forget all the experiences that they've gone through. And that's really who that person is. And we can see that as we start to have some of these discussions about, you know, oh, you were a helicopter nurse um, in the Vietnam War, yep. you know, for three, and you've seen this, oh, you owned a library and you and your husband were. And so as we start to have some of these conversations, we see that part of that person coming back up. So important to engage in that side of that person and to always look at them as having those experiences and not just that some old person who doesn't have capabilities. It, it also gives us something that we, we need a lot of right now, especially in the United States, and that is perspective, right? 
how else are you going to learn about perspective without learning about other people, what they've gone through? Mm -hmm. I think that's why people that are well-traveled um, are w more well-educated than people that graduate from college. Oh, right? totally, yeah. A uh, hundred percent. Like, <laughs> sure. like uh, do I remember what I learned in English class my, my freshman year of high school? I mean, <laughs> uh, of uh, college? No. Yeah. No. But do I remember going to Canada and learning about French cultures and those kind of things? Like, yes, that was like, it's huge. That's it. You know, that's interesting um, because I feel like all the important lessons I've learned in life have been instantaneous. It's like one moment where I'm like, it changes your perspective. So whether it's like travel, let's say it's travel or something yeah, yeah, yeah. and you see a village and you, and you see the way they're living and then you attach that to how grateful they are for what they have and you immediately, it changes your perspective and you have that forever. You always are aware of that and you never forget it. Some of the best things we have in our life um, that make us better people ha happen instantaneously that change our perspective, you know? So I'm not, uh, crapping on college or and i know you're not either no, yeah um but uh you know knowledge and perspective change can come from anywhere so always be aware of it um we have two more to go that we uh that you and i felt were important to yep. discuss today um professional and volunteer support um train staff and volunteers obviously it's important to have both right yeah and, and like speaking of that though like it's hard for some people that don't have the money or prepared for those, those moments getting older, uh, you know, having issues. Some of them can't afford it. Uh, I know we got some state help that was not the best <laughs> by any means necessary. <laughs> um, but that's hard, you know. Uh, and the best thing to do, like, you know what they say, like the, the best day to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best way, day to plant trees today. Um, you know, go through those things right now. Understand what you have going on. Like, are, am I covered if I have a stroke? If I, you know, am I going to be able to help my family out? I mean, I think understanding the, sco the, the, the scope of the situation is huge, man. Like, what, what am I going to have to fight ahead? And I think that's why this genetic tests are so amazing for us selling them mm -hmm. and having our clients come in and be like, oh, uh, cancer is on my, uh, there's a huge amount of uh, risk for cancer here. Huge amount of risk for uh cardiovascular disease and like understanding what's going on so we can actually help them now yeah my movement screening is way off i'm right anytime right. i'm bending down to pick something up all my weight is shifting to the insides of my feet my feet are turning outwards my hips are tight we already know what's going to happen to you in the future right right so we yes. can see a lot of these things now well, as, as well as with the genetic test when you when, when you're putting the genetic test with your biomechanical assessment like hey listen this person's got three different alleles that's saying that their acl is going is going bonkers so you're able to tell that in real time like hey listen like it's not if something's going to happen like i know your acl is going to blow up yeah yeah you for know? sure yeah, yeah we saw there was a athlete in uh, who was it big uh man i can't i can't remember his name but was jumping on the sidelines at, at the um super bowl oh, re oh, yeah. ready to run yeah yeah, yeah right. ready to run in and tore his achilles tendon just getting ready for the play i mean this is a supreme athlete who's probably the most athletic person in the world top you know percentage and tours achilles and and uh so yeah we want to find ways where you know mitigate these if not prevent them at least mitigate them yes. or be aware of them and then um we're gonna breeze over safety and compliance which we'll leave for uh i think crystal to discuss yeah um, when she comes on about um, uh, some of the safety protocols and compliance protocols, the more uh, uh, minutia stuff of assisted living. And then finally, that brings us to evaluation and feedback. One of the things that we talked a lot about perception today, perspective, all those different types of things, if we're not willing to grow ourselves and do a better job at this, mm -hmm. then we shouldn't be doing this. Right? I understand a lot of people out there have, are, are – gifted with this situation of taking care of a family member and it's not fun but it's trust me trust me it is a lot better to accept the situation and try to grow and learn from it and try to do better than to stick in the exact same spot you were six months down the road and still feel it's the exact same way mm -hmm. this is my, my, my opinion on evaluations so, and stuff that's a great great point um super good point evaluation and feedback yeah we we want to be honest with ourselves we want to grow as providers whether it be you're teaching a fitness class or you're, you're you know, an enrichment director, you're organizing a schedule, um, managing other people, whatever it is, we want to be honest with ourselves, evaluate our yes. own performance, how we're doing, and then find ways where we can make our performance better um, and, and then also getting feedback. So, 
you know, talking to residents, what did you like? What didn't you like? What do you like doing better? And tailoring those. Obviously, those kind of seem self-explanatory, but... Uh, but it's not, though, because people don't do it. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, it needs to be said. It totally needs to be said. You got to... That, this isn't just for assisted living. It's like a whole life thing. But, you know, being honest with yourself, evaluate yourself. How am I doing? Uh, get feedback and then making improvements on it. Um, but d- doubly for the assisted living. Um. Yeah, go, go out and do your own research too, mm-hmm. right? Like go, go out and, you know, 10 minutes a day if you're going through something like this. Like, hey, my mom, my mom or dad's in a, in a memory care facility or what have you. It's like mm-hmm. go look up some things that, that, that you could do to help. Hey, what are some mm-hmm. things I could do on the outside? Oh, maybe a care package for mom and dad, or you know, maybe I can I can get them um, some movies or DVDs that I know they'd really really like. Mm-hmm. I could sign them up for some special classes or something like that. So I, I think one of the things too to add on to what you're kind of doing as we're wrapping this up is mm-hmm. is do your own freaking research. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how that's how you and I got to this business is doing our own research because we realize that everyone else out there, or most people out there, don't take fitness and wellness as serious as we do. Yeah, fantastic point. Well, hey, thanks for joining us, guys. We appreciate it again. This is Brett and Tripp. We are uh, co-owners of Ascend Performance Training. We train athletes and do genetic testing here and blood work. And um, we have an AI platform called Hyperspeed on the back end that uh, monitors all of our programs and our results and improvements. We do employee wellness programs. Um, and sports rehabilitation, among some other things that we do. But uh, as always, we're passionate about the uh, aging population, and we're going to do everything in our power to um, continue to grow that side as well. Final thoughts, Trip? anything? Yeah, just want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank U-Versu Clothing. We want to thank O2 Boost. We want to thank Kalevala Labs, Ascend Performance Training, Pelvic Harmony, which is a PT studio inside of Ascent Performance Training. Make sure you guys are checking that out. Um, also going to check out Health Profiling. It's available available on Amazon and Kindle. Uh, we also want to thank um, – am I kidding? Is that everybody? Um, shout out to Gene Planet there who posted our uh, reposted our podcast. If you haven't seen it, we have over, I don't know, 75 or 80 podcasts now. Um, go back. It's titled Genetic Wellness. Genetic-based wellness. Genetic, genetic-based wellness. You'll see uh, it's um, us going through our entire process from start to finish through a company called Gene Planet that does all of our genetic testing for us. Absolutely awesome, man. Brett, great conversation as always. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. All right. Take care. Bye.